drug and overdose issues that Queen Anne's County has, and it's it's to a point now where I think it needs to be, you know, we need to broadcast this and be in more upfront with it. Uh, you know, I, I, I know on social media that there's been a pounding that's saying that the commissioners aren't doing enough. Well, these commissioners are doing a whole bunch, and I just want to go down through the lines. I mean, I, I am the liaison to the Drug Free Coalition. I'm, a, I'm also sitting on that task force for Queen Anne's County, and, you know, there is a lot of things that Queen Anne's County is doing. You know, Dr. Ciotola is with, with the health department is, is in our schools now with new programs for our junior high and our elementary school that they're trying to get incorporated to educating our young kids to stay away from the drugs. Uh, I, I will say that our health department, you know, I mean, excuse me, our emergency services that just left, a lot of people don't understand that the heroin epidemic is being laced with fentanyl. Fentanyl is so powerful, if, if any of our emergency services was to get that on their hands or on their skin, they could immediately come underneath the, the throes of the drugs. It, and that has happened in the past, so we have to treat those patients when they come up on them in a totally different way. So, I mean, you know, that, that, that's one of the things going on. We, when I first came on as a commissioner, uh, I'm proud to say that sitting down with the sheriff and sitting down with the superintendent of schools, we were finally started the searches back up. That has been running perfectly. I mean, I think that uh, Sheriff Hoffman, with the searches in our schools to keep our schools safe, with our new superintendent, and there's some other things, some other things that are going to be happening here very shortly to even go a step further with that. So, you know, the sheriff is, is, is doing, his, I think, a great job. I get to sit in and, and listen to some of the things where the public isn't privy to. And naturally, you can't tell everything, but, you know, there is a lot of things going on to try and keep our, our, our younger generation safe in Queen Anne's County. Uh, the Drug Free Coalition wants to put up signs. We have four signs made right now, just like Anne Arundel County has, with overdoses year to date and deaths year to date. Well, we've been getting a pushback because, you know, one of the places we want to put a sign is right at the Bay Bridge. When you come off the Bay Bridge, like I said, you know, we go back to 86, 84 percent of the county traveling across that bridge every day to keep heroin and the, and the overdoses and everybody's, you know, in their conscious state, you can't get a better location than every time they come home, they see that. So hopefully they'll want to go home and connect with their kids. What'd you do today? Where are you going? You know, they have to be more involved. Well, the state's pushing back now, and, and, and I, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but if we're under a state of emergency, there's a guardrail on Route 50 when you come off the bridge. If anybody walks the Bay Bridge walk, you come off the bridge, there's an opening in the guardrail, you go across a wooden bridge, and you get onto the side road. Well, behind that guardrail, by that wooden bridge, there's plenty of room. It's out of traffic. It's protected by a guardrail. You know, I, I've had a conversation. I've sent a letter to the governor. I've sent a, a letter to the secretary, Ron, no response. I did get a response from the MDTA director, uh, Kevin Regret, and he's looking into it because that's his property. So we're trying to get a sign there. I will say we wanted a sign at each one of the schools. That's not working out, but we're going to put them close enough to the schools. And, and the fourth sign is going to hopefully go up by the state police barracks up on Route 3. The sheriff's department and state police, they will be in charge of, of updating those numbers. Now we get to those numbers. Where do the numbers come from? In the state of Maryland, they register a death as where you die. And that's a problem for Queen Anne's County because Queen Anne's County, again, doesn't have a major drug selling problem here. But we have a problem with our individuals going across the bridge to Annapolis, buying their drugs in Annapolis, and dying right there in Annapolis. You know, so, you know, I, my, my heart goes out to the, to the parents of the two young men that died Saturday evening, Sunday morning, uh, but there's been probably seven to nine others that have gone across the bridge and died. So Queen Anne's County is not going to follow the rule with these signs of, of where they died. If they lived in Queen Anne's County and they slept in Queen Anne's County, they're going to go on there. And, you know, those numbers, when you start to look at those numbers, Anne Arundel County is over 250 deaths. Hmm. It's amazing. It's just the number. But again, I, they're not all their citizens. But look how many people live in Anne Arundel County. And if you look at Queen Anne's County, and if we're over 10 for 48,000 people, it's enormous. It is a problem. We need to address that problem. So, you know, we're working on treatment. A lot of people, you know, what, what can we do? What can we do? I'm a, I'm a big opponent of these 30, 60, and 90-day programs. I'm a proponent for the, the six-month to one-year programs, and we are working at that. We are trying to find people to come to the county to set these programs up. Uh, I will say on the same token, if you know somebody that's doing drugs, you know somebody that's in the throes of the drugs, you need to call. You need to call somebody. You need to call the sheriff's department. You need to call anybody. But 
you need to make it, uh, you need to make a conscientious effort to wake up somebody and get them get that attention that they need. And and it, right now, like I said, that, that it's all coming together as far how we're going to get through this maze of, it, it, for instance, these long programs, these year-long programs cost anywhere from ten thousand dollars, ninety-five hundred to eleven thousand dollars a month. Insurance doesn't cover that. Most insurances. So again, this is something that, that clamoring with the state, how do we get insurances to pick that up? And you know, there's a lot of people that are just having struggling with, with the finances of it. Uh, you know, one of the things that we're doing, one of the small things, is I've, I've gone out and researched and found a drug drop-off box that we can put at the emergency room. These are small things, but they, they add up. I mean, you know, right now we can, you can take it to the Sheriff's Department and Northern County State Police. Well, now this is going to be hopefully installed at the emergency room where you'll be able to take your <coughs> excess prescriptions and drop them off. You know, I, I just, I, you know, I, again, I'm sorry to take so much time, but I think the public needs to know that every aspect from the treatment, the, the sheriff's department, our emergency services, we are trying anything and everything we can, and, and the Drug Free Coalition, Sheriff's Department, and these commissioners are doing their due diligence.